Hello and welcome to episode 243 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die, from 1997, The Ice Storm, directed by Ang Lee. I had seen bits and pieces of this film uh, on TV when I was younger, in my teenage years, and this is a film that is very much built around sex. And so as a young teenager, I was interested in those segments, the rest not so much. So I, I kind of had seen bits and pieces of this, but never really had any grasp on the full story. And I'd always wanted to revisit it properly as an adult, which I have now done and we'll talk about and discuss in this video. I feel like this is a film you can really look into and really look into what's going on under the surface. This is absolutely a film that deals with what's going on under the surface of the character's uh, skins, you know, literally inside their heads, the the things that are left unsaid, the the, the looks, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the intentions that are there without the words to back them up. There's a lot of uh, quiet turmoil going on in all the characters in this film. And for me, it's an incredible cast of uh, many people that I recognize. You know, Elijah Wood, Tobey Maguire, Sigourney Weaver, one of my favorite actors of all time, Kevin Klein. Um, the cast is really uh, excellent, and it deals with a family in uh, Connecticut, I believe, uh, in America in the 70s, around the time of the Watergate scandal, which is kind of um, uh, brought up uh, throughout the film. It's on the news, people are kind of watching it and talking about it, things like that. Gives you a kind of context of the, the framing of this uh, story, where it's set, the time in which it's set and the things that are going on politically, but I wouldn't say that that side of it really has a, a big effect on the story, it's just there to kind of color in the the setting, I suppose, in the time period. And the ice storm refers to a storm that happens uh, where you know things get very cold and ice begins to kind of form all, all around the, the surrounding areas, and it's a, a look for a film that I always enjoy, which is that kind of fall, kind of overcast, gray, cold, you know, icy, you know, this is something about that I enjoy watching when I'm kind of, you know, cuddled up on the sofa with my blanket and a candle. Like, I, that's literally what I did with this film, and it was really um, enjoyable to me. There's something about that. I just like that kind of setting for a film, uh, and it really reflects the kind of, uh, the, the characters in the film. Uh, there's two families who are kind of the primary focus of the story, um, and Kevin Klein, who's the kind of the father of one family, is straying away to the other and having an affair with Sigourney Weaver's character. I, I, I just finished watching the film about three hours ago. I couldn't tell you the character names. I don't know what that really tells you about the film, but uh, I really was engaged in, in the story and I didn't really need to know the characters' names. It's all very clearly defined as who is who and, and that there's the kids who are kind of going off and doing their own thing, being fairly rebe rebellious, but, but not really that rebellious, you know? There's this sense of every character in the film really is rebelling against something, but in their own kind of quiet, restrained, and uh, half-hearted way, really. None of them are really fully committing to, to certain things. And sex, as I said, is a big part of it. Lust is a big part of it. Obviously, Kevin Klein is having an affair, but also the kids. Uh, Christina Ricci, another one of my favorite actresses, she plays uh, the daughter of Kevin Klein, and she is... I wouldn't say promiscuous, but she certainly is quite open and is kind of pursuing Elijah Wood, and then even his younger brother. There's an incident between those two, uh, two incidents, in fact, and both very different incidents, you know. What, the first one was kind of quite shocking and, you know, uh, um, yeah, just, just, just hard to kind of uh, forget that, that scene. And then also the next scene uh, that they share together is a lot more poignant and, uh, and charming and sweet. It kind of gives you the, the polar opposites of what can happen when two kids kind of decide to explore each other physically, I suppose. Uh, it gives you, gives you two very extreme uh, opposite end versions of that with the same characters. The film was bookended really nicely with uh, Tobey Maguire's character um, and uh, making his way home from New York to Connecticut on a train during the ice storm. Uh, and so we see him and, and his kind of uh, trials and tribulations trying to get this uh, girl that he fancies to kind of go out with him, played by Katie Holm. Again, the, the cast is just like so, they're so recognizable, you know, and, uh, and, and a really good cast as well. And I just, there, there were just lots of moments, little mini moments I really enjoyed, like Sigourney Weaver's character at one point, towards the end, she kind of goes home, gets into bed and kind of just crawls into the fetal position. And, you know, you could say that's a very obvious symbol for what a character is going through, but it really, um, 
it really fit what her character was going through, you know, and uh, it just made a lot of sense. And it was just telling you something that, you know, I mean, at that point, I don't think she has another line in the film. So it kind of rounds off her character in a way. And uh, I mean, there's another moment, but, you know, there isn't a, a scene where she turns to another, another character and says, you know what, this has been, da, 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 da. there's no explanation there. It's just in the actions of the characters without the words at times that really um, make those um, moments more memorable to me, I think. One of my favorite, in fact, maybe my favorite moment of the film, oddly, is when Kevin Klein walks in on his daughter, Christina Ricci, kind of fooling around with Elijah Wood in a very odd scene where they're kind of trying to maybe have sex or at least dry hump and she's wearing a Richard Nixon mask and Elijah Wood's just like, okay, I'm going to go for it anyway. And so, you know, Kevin Klein, he gets his daughter, drags her out of there and he's pissed off at her and stuff. Uh, but then he kind of softens, you know, and realizes this is kind of is what, what kind of kids get up to, I suppose. Uh, and so he's not too harsh on her and they're walking home and it's a wet day. You know, the storm is coming soon and her feet are soaked. You can see it through her, her trousers. The kind of up to her shins are just soaked through. And once he's kind of chastised her a bit, he says, you know, your feet cold. And she's like, you know, she nods. And so he picks her up uh, and not in a way that... Um, he he picks her up like you would pick up a you know your daughter or son when they're like two three four five and here's that she's like thirteen fourteen fifteen it it's a very kind of childish thing to do to someone who's that old and yet it felt really sweet and kind of um, it almost felt like he was trying to recapture that bond they they might have had earlier before she'd grown up so much and that kind of the idea of a, a parent kind of realizing that their their little girl is all grown up now or is, is starting to grow up. And it was kind of a regression back to childhood a little bit, but it was just a really sweet kind of uh, honest moment, I think, that I just, uh, and again, she's just picking up his daughter so her feet wouldn't continue to get wet. Um, but just the way he picks her up, uh, it just felt very believable. And uh, for some reason, I just love that moment. Uh, and his wife, I, 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 I don't know her, that's the thing. The, the wife of Kevin Klein's character, um, I've seen her in other films before, but I, I'm not as familiar with her to remember her name offhand, which I'm kind of annoyed about. But, you know, she was really good in the film and she has her own kind of thing going on where she it, it's kind of implied that she might know what's going on with her husband straying away. And she kind of begins to self implode a little bit as well. So it's just all this stuff going on again under the surface, under the skin. And it leads to a, a fairly, excuse me, fairly shocking finale which is a, a very um, a very sad finale, I should say. And the final scene of the film, I thought, was uh, very powerful in its own way. And what I loved about it was that it showed the same restraint that all the other characters did throughout the film. You know, it, uh, it was an emotional final moment, but nothing was said, really. I mean, the, one word is said. One character tries to comfort another by, by I think, saying their name. But there's no kind of, no one's talking about what's going on in that scene. It's just the emotions bubbling outward. But it's not in that movie way where when someone is crying, it's like you see the tears slow. No, it's someone with their hands over their face, just, you know, inconsolable in a way. And that, and I just love, it, it seems like such a simple thing to do. But when I see a character crying like this, I feel it so much fucking more than when someone's like... The tears start coming down. It's just so artificial, you know. Uh, so that that was a really powerful closer to the film. But it is a very sad film in in that sense. And you, a lot of the characters, you could look at and say that none of them are very likable. Um, but I think there are moments of goodness to latch onto. I mean, Kevin Klein, he seems like a guy who's just been pulled astray, and he just doesn't really know what he's doing. And maybe that's like a big alarm for me to kind of feel any kind of empathy for a guy who's cheating on his wife. Obviously, for me, I think that's something that is just, you know, very pointless and uh, wrong. And I think you should really address your relationship if, if you go into that degree in, uh, in your disconnect with your partner, if you start sleeping with someone else. But just the way Kevin Klein plays it... Um, I feel empathy for him all the same. Maybe it's because I see that he's a good father. Maybe it's the scene when he's trying to talk to his son about kind of the birds and the bees, completely oblivious to the fact that his son knows all about this kind of stuff. Y you can see that he's kind of hopeless, I suppose. And uh, and that, that I guess that draws more empathy out than, than would have been 
Uh, if he didn't seem so hopeless, if he seemed like someone who really had his shit together, it might have made the affair seem a bit more sinister. Uh, you know, he really just seems like a guy who's just been been, been dragged along for it, you know. Um, but I feel empathy, but much more for the wife as well. Uh, and then she ends up doing something that, you know, kind of throws everything. So I, I don't want to go into the details too much, but I, I really, really enjoyed this film. I think it's a really strong drama. I definitely watch it again. Um, just because the performances are so interesting and um, and captivating and believable, and uh, and again it taps into that um, side of our psyches where lust plays a big part in things. Uh, there's a bit of sexual exploration there with the kids, uh, and it never gets explicit, which I really like. You know, with a couple of quote unquote sex scenes, but that, you know it really doesn't show anything, which again I really like. I don't like it when they become too titillating and obvious, and it just seems uncomfortable to me. Uh, as far as just like the fact that they sat down and had to fully, you know, it, I don't know, that's a whole other topic about sex scenes, which I've talked about, I think, many times before in the Epic Film Challenge too, probably more specifically with In the Realm of the Senses, which actually just passed 50,000 views on YouTube, um, which is interesting. But regardless, I, I wonder if this video will pass 50 views. Um, but The Ice Storm, I, I really, it, very sensitively done. Um, a very quiet film, and, and that's why I love it, I think. It doesn't really, it's not smacking you around the face with pretty much anything. It, it's kind of, uh, again, repeating myself, all under the surface, and all um, just a bit, uh, I wouldn't say a bit too subtle, because it's, it's just the right amount of subtle that I enjoy in a film like this. Um, but it's all very subtle, and, and that plays to its own strengths, I believe, uh, due to the setting, due to what the characters, who they are, and uh, it just all, it all works, I think. So for me, The Ice Storm was, was a great film. I don't know where this is going to slot in, but I can't, I can't imagine where I could have easily cut it in. So this is just an additional part I want to add about The Ice Storm before we round off the video. And it's the, the opening scene when um, Tobey Maguire is talking about um, family. And, and I forget the precise wording, but it was a really well written and, and kind of eloquently um, described uh, monologue, uh, whatever you want to call it, about family and how sometimes families can be a little bit fractured, which is kind of expanded upon throughout the entire film, really, and how family relationships sometimes aren't the easiest thing. And uh, even if you are close with each other, you can kind of you can kind of splinter apart. Uh, they're always going to be there for you, but at the same time, you're always going to have to be there with your family. And there's just, there's just lots of things to think about with your own family. Of course, it's all dependent on what your family life is like and how you relate to that sentiment. But, uh, you know, certainly once you get to the age where you have moved away from home and then you go back to see your family, your parents, um, it's something to uh, that you always think about how things have changed. Things will never be the same, um, but your family will always be there. And, and, and there's the good side of that and there's the bad side of that you can look into. And just one little micro moment I really enjoyed in the film was when we see Tobey Maguire and his sister, Christina Ricci, interact and they call each other Charles. It was just this like really like random but again believable thing that like a brother and a sister would do where they both just call each other Charles and they speak in this very weird uh, manner to each other. I just thought that was really funny. Anyway, on with the closing uh, section of the video. It all works, I think. So for me, The Ice Storm was, was a great film. I very much enjoyed watching it. Is it a film you should see before you die? I would say yes, but I wouldn't say it's that kind of remarkable film where it's like, oh yeah, you've got to see it before you die. But it's one of those ones where I say, yeah, I think you probably should see this film. If you, if you really love film, you should give this one a try for the great cast, the great performances, and the subtle story and the way it plays out and, uh, and to get to that final scene and feel the weight of that which I think was just uh, wonderfully done and, and kind of heartbreaking, you know, uh, which is the intent. So that's been my thoughts on The Ice Storm. Thank you for watching. If you've seen the film, please let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next one.